Hi again. Welcome to Lesson 6 on Designing Database Solutions with Microsoft SQL Server 2019. For today's topic, you are going to learn how to select records from multiple related tables using SQL Inner Join and Left and Right Outer Join. To illustrate this, we will be working with the same Lab Activity Number 4 database that we've used in our last discussion. Let's review the database diagram that we have. The Employees table is connected to the Teachers table in a one-to-one -one relationship. The Departments table is connected to Teachers table in a one-to-many relationship. While the Faculty Meetings table is a junction table connecting both the Teachers and the Meetings table in a many-to-many -many relationship. I'll start with these first three tables, Employees, Teachers, and Departments. So, I'll create a new query. And let's check the content of these tables. We have three result sets as well, employees, teachers, and departments. In the teachers table, the department field is a foreign key field that matches a primary key field in the departments table. Now, to retrieve the records from these two tables in only one result set, we can use the SQL inner join. I'll select everything from the teachers table and then use the inner join keyword to join this to the departments table. And then we must use the on keyword to specify which fields these two tables are linked. So in the teachers table, it is the department field. And in the departments table, it is the dep code field. Let's execute this code. And when we use the inner join keyword, it selects all rows from both tables as long as there is a match between the columns. If there are records in the departments table that do not match in the teachers table, then this departments will not be shown. I'll duplicate this code and instead of selecting all the columns in both tables, I will only display the employee ID from the teachers table and also the academic rank and then, in the Departments table, I want the name field. Let's execute this. So, we were able to limit only the fields that we want to display. I'll duplicate this code again. And since the name of our teachers are stored in the Employees table, we can join the result set of these first two table joins to the Employees table. And again, we have to specify which field this employees table is connected to. So, the teacher's employee ID field is linked in a one-to-one -one relationship to the employee's ID field. Now, I can include the employee's first name and the employee's last name in the fields to be displayed. I'll execute this code. And we were able to include the first name and the last name fields from the employees table. I'll duplicate this code again. And we can format how the fields are displayed in our result set like this. If I want that the first name and the last name fields appear in just a single column with a space in between, we can use the plus operator to concatenate a string in SQL. I'll execute this code again. And here's the result. The only problem now is it doesn't have a column name. So you can use the as keyword to give your field or table a temporary name or an alias. Don't worry, it only affects the query and not the actual table structure. When joining these tables, it doesn't have to be in this exact order of teachers, employees, and then departments. I'll write another example and use this as keyword to give a temporary names to our tables. Select everything from teacher's table as A, inner join with employee's table as B, and now, instead of using the actual name of the table, I'll use this alias to simplify my code. So whenever I refer to the teacher's and employee's table in this query, like if I want to retrieve only selected fields, I'll simply use a and B instead.
I'll duplicate this code again, and I can simplify this code further. You must know that the as and the inner keyword are optional, which means I can simply remove this and our query will still work fine. So I'll join another table departments, as C, and it is linked in the teachers table A, via this department field and the department's that depth code field. And through this, I can now retrieve the name and the depth code from the department's table and give it a temporary field name of department. And as you can see in the result, this code produces this temporary department field. Now let's create a query for these three tables, the teacher's table and faculty meetings table are connected via the employee ID field and the faculty field. And this meetings table is connected via the meeting ID field and the meeting field. I'll select everything from these first three tables so that we can see all the records. We have four teachers and three meetings respectively. And in the junction table, which is the faculty meetings, we can see that faculty 102, which is this teacher with employee ID 102, attended a meeting with meeting ID number 2. And if we check who else signed up for this meeting ID number 2, is this teacher with employee ID 104. And looking at this faculty 104, this teacher also signed up on another meeting with meeting ID number 1. So again, I'll create another query using an inner join. To join these three tables together in a single result set, I'll first join the faculty meetings table as A to teachers table as B. And these two tables are linked through these fields, faculty and employee ID. So I'll say on faculty meetings that faculty field equals to teachers that employee ID field. And then I'll join the result of this to the meetings table through this meeting and meeting ID fields. But before I execute this, recall that when we use the inner join, it only returns a result set where there's a match in the foreign key and the primary key fields. I want you to take a look at this faculty meetings table and teachers table. You can easily see that the only teacher here with employee ID 101 will not be included in this list. Another thing is that in the meetings table, meeting ID number 3 will not be included as well. And when I execute this code, we were able to retrieve what we are expecting. We only retrieve records that match in the faculty and employee ID fields as well as a match in the meeting and meeting ID fields. To illustrate the concept of outer join, I'm going to simplify this code a bit and just use this first two table join. which means I'll remove this part of the result set, the meetings table, and select only these fields from faculty meetings table and teachers table. I'll duplicate this code again and explain the use of outer join. Well, outer joins are either left outer join or right outer join. Suppose I use here left outer join and I'll execute this one. So why nothing has changed in my result set? When using left outer join, it prioritizes the first table on the left, which is the faculty meetings in this query. It's just that all the records in this left table through this faculty field can be found in the right table teachers through this employee ID field. In effect, the result set produced is similar to the ones you see when using an inner join. So I'll duplicate this code and now, I'm going to prioritize this second table on the right, the teacher's table, and change this to right outer join. And now all records from the right table were retrieved, and those records that don't have match on the left table are assigned as null. And sure, we only have one teacher in the teacher's table that doesn't exist in the faculty meetings table. 
You can use either the left or the right outer join because it has the same purpose. The interpretation will only vary depending on which table is placed on the left and which one is placed on the right. So to show you this, I'll write another query and place the teacher's table on the left and use the left outer join with faculty meetings table on the right. And now, these fields will appear on the left side and these fields will appear on the right side. And there you have it. So, it means when I use the right outer join here, this null record will be removed since we prioritize this right table. And you'll notice that the result set is similar to using just the inner join. So now, how do we benefit from using this outer join? Let's say we want to retrieve all the faculty members who did not attend or did not sign up for any meeting. We cannot achieve this by just simply using the inner join. Why? Because inner join only retrieves records that exist in both tables. And what we want here is that to retrieve records that don't exist in one of the tables. In this case, we'll have to use the outer join. Since we can retrieve all the records from the teacher's table, and those that don't exist in the faculty meetings table will be null. And that's the advantage of using this. Here, we can simply add a WHERE clause to only retrieve. We can use either faculty or the meeting field, it doesn't matter, and check if it is null. This query simply says, I want to retrieve all the teachers that don't exist in the faculty meetings table. And there you have it. We only have one. But of course, if we are going to use this query for reporting purposes, we don't want to include these null fields. So instead of displaying everything, I'll just display everything from table B. I'll copy this code. And when writing queries that involve multiple tables like this, it is not uncommon to combine inner join and outer join to produce the desired result set. By the way, we can remove this outer keyword since it is optional. So for example, since the teacher's name is stored in the employees table, I can use the inner join to join the employees table. And if we take a look at our database diagram, both tables are linked using the employee ID. So now I can include the information from the employees table And I don't want to display the rate per unit field in my teacher's table. I'll execute this. And we can see here that teacher Mark Sam is the only teacher who did not attend or sign up to any meeting. You can join several tables as you want, if information that you need in your result set are stored in those tables. Let's join another table, say departments. It is connected to our teacher's department field through this depth code field. Say I want this department field to display both the code and the name of the department. And there you go. Let me copy this part of the code. I'll omit the WHERE clause. I'll also include all the fields from the faculty meetings table and execute this. Now you see all the teacher's record, including Mark Sam. And if we want to retrieve only those who attended a meeting, I'll remove the fields from this faculty meeting table first and include this WHERE clause where meeting is not null. Now, since employee ID 104 existed twice in the faculty meetings table, you'll see two exact entries of teacher 104 here in our result set. So if you don't want duplicate records from being displayed in your result set, you can use the distinct clause. Distinct statement returns only unique values, thus eliminates duplicate records in your result set. I'll duplicate this code again and say, I want to include information about the meeting this faculty had signed up. This meetings table is linked through this meeting ID and meeting fields.
So I'll include the meeting agenda, the date and the venue. And when I execute this, notice that employee 104 existed twice even though we use this thing. When we use this thing, it applies to all fields. And in here, you can see that this employee 104 has attended two different meetings with different agenda, date, and room. Now, take note that I can still retrieve the same result set even if I remove this WHERE clause by changing this right join into left join. Similarly, I can use inner join for this. I can also filter my result set, say, I only want all faculty members who attended a meeting with agenda related to syllabus. And we have two records. I can also retrieve only the faculty members from the information systems program who attended a meeting. And we have three records. We can also apply the order by clause, say by date and in descending order. I'll remove this WHERE clause so we can include more records. And that's it! I encourage you to practice writing queries involving several tables to master your skills. Database Diagram is very useful when writing complex queries as it helps you to visualize and identify which field from one table is connected on another table. Because up next, you'll learn another approach on how to join multiple tables using unions and subqueries. And again, thanks for watching. If you learned something of value here, please click the like and subscribe button for more programming tutorials. This is Joe Edgo and hope to see you in the next video lecture.